Hello there. In this video, I'm going to show how I go from Vox Edit all the way to the Game Maker. I'm going to use uh, iPad software called Voxel Max. This will be more of a commentary than a blow by blow description of the tools that I use. So it's a bit high level. Uh, to start with, I want to get this little dude over to Voxel Max. So I export him as a VOX file, Magica Voxel file, VOX file, and uh, use iCloud to get it across to Voxel Max. So this is the iPad. Um, some of the really cool tools in this are being able to double select any body part and enter edit mode like you see now and then start sculpting. To exit um, edit mode, you can click the arrow on the top right. There's an up arrow and then select the next body part and just move in and out of your model really quickly. Super intuitive and fast. Another cool uh, tool is and the bottom, you've got your three panels. You've got your brush panel, you've got your mode, and you've got your tools panel. Um, within each of these, you can see I'm extruding right now using one of the modes called face mode. It allows you to extrude or pull or add to or remove large portions of voxels that are contiguous, that are sort of jo adjoined. Um, you can also use uh, a color mode. So if you select one of the tools a second time, uh, your create tool, your erase tool, your paint tool or select tool, uh, it then uses the color of the surrounding voxels or at least the voxel that you're building on to color the new voxel that you're creating or to help you select a large section of voxels that are the same color. This also overrides the uh, color palette when you are creating voxels, which is super cool because it allows you to move up and down your model if you've already uh, started texturing it or painting it with uh, colors from the color palette. On the left hand side, you've got uh, your most used uh, palette colors, and I think there's six of those. And the the color that is in a square box actually allows you to open the, the material or the palette uh, panel. I tend to leave it permanently open. To play around with some of the other features, such as um, like a solo mode where you're able to work on only the selected model and hide all of the surrounding models, you've got your top right view cube and just below it there's a couple of options there that you should try out. The eye will, will highlight only the selected model um, like I'm doing right now. Uh, to change the workspace you use the icon just below that which allows you to scale out your workspace or shrink it um, like I've just done here with the arm. And then I tend to do things like I just work back and forth until I get the shape I want which I find as I say being able to move it in and out of the model I find it really quick and intuitive. You also have, of course, your mirror at the top when you're in edit mode. Uh, I only do a little bit of work in the actual character just if I need to see something. Mostly I'm just editing the different body parts. But you'll see in a moment that I move one of the arms out. That's just so I can visualize how I think it'll relate to the rest of the body without being so linear as it is now. When your model leaves Vox Edit, it tends to uh, zero out all the rotations and that's why you get the guy looking very straight up and down like you see here. So right now I haven't actually rotated the voxels, I've just rotated the object that the voxels are in. So it hasn't reshaped my, my, um, my sculpting as it were. This is just me trying to realign things after I've reshaped the workspace. finishing off the legs. There's a couple more tools, um, a couple more options in the tools section for moving and rotating, etc., and cloning. But for now, this is this was a 45 minute sketch that I did in Voxel Max. That was me selecting a, a color a color section and moving out the entire section, which was, as I say, it's very handy. Some of the tools in this for um, intuitive modeling, intuitive sculpting. Okay, I'm coming to the end now. So now that I have all of the right hand side put together, I don't need to do the left because I'm just going to mirror those over in Vox Edit. Of course, it would be really cool to just be able to click a button and it swaps out the other side for a mirror of these models, but that's not necessary, not for what I'm doing. So 
back in Vox Edit. Um, I actually didn't show here how I exported, but within a Voxel Max, you can choose the, the scene or outliner dropdown. And within there, if you select and hold on your character, you can then what's called share it. And that allows you to share it as a different file format. And you can just pick Magic of Voxel, um, the Vox format, VOX format. So right now what I'm doing is in Vox Edit, I like to try and work as clean as possible. So I started with a fresh Vox Edit scene. I added in a avatar character using the, the left-hand panel, the rig panel. And then I deleted all the parts connected. I removed, I detached all the parts connected to the rig. And then over on the model panel, where all the models exist, I removed all unattached models, which because I'd removed them all, meant everything was cleared out. The reason I did this is because when I bring back in the model from Voxel Max, it retains all the naming. So it just saves me having to rename everything. It might sound like a small win, but when you have to right click each one or, or select the three dots on each model in Vox Edit and rename it, it becomes a bit of a, a, a laborious process. Next thing I'm doing here is I'm just realigning the pivots because when you take the models back from Voxel Max, you'll find that most of the pivots have reset uh, that are they're sort of logical for the, the space that they're in because uh, Voxel Max optimizes your workspace, uh, which is a good thing, but um, Vox Edit doesn't quite know just yet how to how to deal with that. Or should I say they are not working perfectly together yet in um, keeping that information. But yeah, let's see where this goes. Very cool tool. So a little bit of aligning to make sure it's on the floor. A little bit of a workflow tip is what I tend to do is because you don't really have a floor here is I create a voxel um, plane on the floor. I create a rig node under the root and I place the large floor voxel that I've made, voxel panel that I made a little below the floor just so the character stands on it. That can be really handy for animation as well to making sure your character's feet don't clip through the floor. A little bit of a workflow idea there. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking, uh, first thing I did there was I cleared out all of the unused models that came from Voxel Max, which was the left hand side of the body. So in the model panel, I just removed all unused body parts as it were, all unused models. Then I started mirroring or duplicating first all the right hand side and then renaming them and attaching them to the left side. So now you can see I'm testing them. Once I'd renamed them and attached them to the left side, I had to do some uh, flipping of models to make sure they fit in the right position. What I found for the avatar is just flipping in the and in the x axis is the correct move for everything on the left side. So now I'm just doing a render in Light Tracer. So I've exported it as a GLTF or GLFT. I'm always getting that one mixed up. And uh, I had a template scene for Light Tracer, which I opened and now I've imported this model or added this model in. And I'm just playing around now with the uh, the watermark and choosing which animation it is I want to showcase the character's pose in. And once I'm done, I just save it out as a JPEG. There you go. Um, so now, I want to get it into the game maker. So going back to Vox Edit, I go to File and Export, Export to Marketplace. You have to do some some work, of course, on your website uh, or your your account. But once you have your character on there, I've um, chosen him as my avatar and I added a sword just to make sure everything aligns with his hands. But pretty much that's the process. It's not all the details, of course. I could go through each step, but for now it gives you an idea of where I start and how I get to this last point, point where I get to check out my model and try and assess it.